or you have any high histamine issues, maybe you have itchy skin, digestive issues, sinus problems. Histamine issues can span a lot of different areas of the body, and people with high histamine issues often are wondering whether or not they have histamine intolerance, mast cell activation, some combination of the two, or something else entirely. So in this video, what we're gonna do is look at some solutions to your high histamine issues, irrespective of where they're coming from. The solutions that we're gonna cover here are more specific to histamine intolerance, but they can also help in cases of mast cell activation syndrome. If you're getting a lot out of these videos, please like and subscribe to keep getting videos like this. Let's jump into it. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at solutions to your high histamine issues. And in particular, we're gonna look at a research paper that explores high histamine issues from the perspective of histamine intolerance. And I know a lot of you are suffering with various histamine issues and you don't really have necessarily a diagnosis or you don't have necessarily a clear reason for why that your histamine issues are present. Could be suspicions of mast cell activation syndrome, in some cases, it could be triggered by a vaccine or some kind of infection. And sometimes people have no idea what could be triggering their histamine issues. But from the perspective of histamine intolerance versus mast cell activation syndrome, these are definitely two different phenomena, both of which can cause very high histamine within the body and histamine issues. The key differentiating factor between histamine intolerance and mast cell activation syndrome is the resolution of your symptoms or most of your symptoms when you remove high histamine foods from your diet that suggests that you have more of a histamine intolerance type of issue now while we think about these two things as clearly differentiated processes both are similar in that the issue is high histamine and sometimes you can have both going on because histamine can create more inflammation which can then activate or create more mast cells but again, what we want to look at here is more about solutions to your high histamine issues. And one of the ways we're going to do that is looking at ways to reduce your overall histamine burden. Before we do that, though, we need to look at or I want to explain at least some of the causes of high histamine and some of the causes of increased burden of histamine. And I came across this nice review article that basically demonstrates this in one picture. So we're going to use this image plus a few others to explain some of the things that are going on with your histamine issues and how to resolve some of them and reduce some of your overall histamine burden. So this is the article in question here and basically goes into a lot of different ways that histamine is creating problems. But it's mostly again from the histamine intolerance perspective. And so histamine is a broader category of molecules known as amines. And you can see this is the enterocyte here. It's a basically one of your digestive cells. It's part of the small intestine cell. So this is looking at basically a single cell in the various ways that different molecules and things can interact and create more histamine coming into the body. So these H's, the little dots here are the histamine. And if it passes through the enterocyte or the digestive cell intact, then you get more histamine into that artery or vein that then can go on to do its various things that it has to do throughout the body. The more of this that's coming in and the less of it that's broken down, or sometimes it can be broken down elsewhere in the body, but the more of it coming in, the more likely you're gonna have histamine issues. So in looking at this from a first principle standpoint, you do wanna look at the amount of histamines coming in. And so there is such a thing known as high histamine foods and basically, Anything that's fermented is going to be a high histamine food. So you want to look at reducing the amount of histamines that are coming in through your diet. So fish, cheese, alcohol are all common high histamine foods. And we're going to look at some more specifics around that as well. Before we do that, though, there's also other types of histamine in foods called biogenic amines. And they're basically similar molecular structure to other amines. And they're just naturally occurring in the food, but they're not histamine specifically. And what this is showing is that the biogenic amines can actually inhibit this enzyme here called DAO or diamine oxidase. This is the enzyme that's responsible for breaking down the histamine that's coming in from your diet, from the food that you're eating. You can also have an inhibitory effect from alcohol and also medications. There's also different types of amines that are going to be produced by your microbiome. And 
Even histamine is produced by your microbiome, but there's other amines too called putrescine and cadaverine. And not only are they going to require similar enzymes to break them down, but they can also have an inhibitory effect on this DAO enzyme. For females, there are certain things around their cycle that can cause them to have more or less activity of the DAO. And that could sometimes play a role in why you might be feeling better or worse at different times of your cycle. And then of course, there's the genetics of this specific enzyme called DAO, but don't wanna to go too long with this video. So I wanna just focus in on the foods in ways that you guys can reduce your overall histamine burden by looking more specifically at your diet. So basically what's going on with this is that this is basically showing us the different hierarchies of high histamine foods on the top and on the left is the highest histamine foods, which you should absolutely avoid. And then as we get further along here, you have foods that may create problems. They're lower priority down here. As you go across, you get to still fairly high with strawberries. And in the second section here, we have some moderate. And in the last section are still somewhat high. You want to avoid them. So let's look at some of these just to give you a little more familiarity. So fish are almost always going to be problematic. And if they're canned or fermented in any way, then those are going to be more of a problem. So you have canned fish on the top here. And as you go across, we also have different types of cheeses. And the harder the cheese, the more fermentation has occurred. So therefore, the more histamine present, cured, dried meats and sausages, longer time that it's sitting around, the more potential for histamine, other biogenic amines to develop in them. And here we see other cheeses that are softer and less fermented. And we have other types of fish. Most fish are going to have some histamines present in them. And then we have some of the higher vegetables here with tomatoes and spinach. Sauerkraut is an, in its cabbage form, wouldn't be necessarily a huge problem, but sauerkraut itself would be. Same thing with milk as it sits around and you're consuming things like yogurt uh, or other fermented milk products. It's going to have more histamines and amines in them. Alcohol is produced through fermentation process, a wine, beer, any kind of alcohol is going to have some histamine in it. And these are the bigger offenders. Citrus is definitely high in histamine and so strawberries. What we're suggesting here is that reducing the amount of histamine coming in through your digestive tract is going to lower the histamine burden, whether you have histamine intolerance or mast cell activation syndrome. This can reduce your overall burden while you're sorting out what the actual cause is. Now, if you do have more of a mast cell activation or some other cause, you're still going to be having symptoms. But like I said before, you could be having a little bit of both of these. So it's important to work with your doctor and try and get a clear diagnosis on what's going on. They may have you do different experiments with diet. Obviously there's blood testing you can do. The blood testing isn't always conclusive though. And that's because of the degradation process of histamine is so quick. But anyways, back to our food here. So then we go down here and these are more the moderates. You got your other types of fruits here. We got eggs, we got nuts. And so basically just showing you some different approaches that you can take to experiment and try to understand in your body if you're having more of a histamine intolerance. So if you eat something up here, what happens? Or if you're having more of a mast cell activation syndrome, and if you avoid most of these foods, what happens? Do you, do all your symptoms go away? If so, that is certainly pointing in the direction of more of a histamine intolerance, because that means you're lacking that DAO enzyme, which we were showing earlier. There could be other problems or genetic alterations with your histamine clearance pathways like MAO, HNMT, and some others. But the DAO is thought to be one of the more prominent. And so in the case that this is more of a histamine intolerance issue, just avoiding high histamine foods may get you most of the way there, but you are still having some issues. So there's two things that I often recommend in my patients in these cases. One, after you've established that, yes, this is simply from the foods that I'm consuming, after we have that information, okay, you can do with it what you want. You can avoid those foods if you're happy with the result. And if you just can't live without your sardines, canned sardines, you're going to have to take something to help your body break that down. Depends on how severe the responses are. You may have headaches, you may have hives, but in the case that you're having more of a severe response, outside of avoiding the food, you can also take DAO as a supplement. And there are genetic tests you can do to identify if you do have a SNP or problem with your DAO, but 
We're not going to go into too much detail on that one in this video, but I just wanted to mention it here. Sometimes we'll use medications too when you have some persistent histamine issues, histamine overload issues, and it appears that it's coming in from food. One such medication is called chromalin sodium. Typically, this medication is going to help stabilize mast cells from spilling out or opening their granules, putting more histamine into the body. So it's not a traditional histamine breakdown product. But as I said, sometimes there's overlap between mast cell activation and histamine intolerance, and they can be co-activating where high histamine is causing mast cell activation. Mast cell activation can further burden the body with the amount of histamine it needs to break down. So hopefully this gives you more specific targeted actions you can take for your high histamine issues. If you want to see more videos like this one, let me know in the comments section. I'll be happy to make other videos like this. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.